This video is brought to you by the Product Manager Infantry Combat Equipment, or PDM ICE. PDM ICE is a product management office of Marine Corps Systems Command located in Quantico, Virginia. This video is one in a series of videos PDM ICE has developed in order to instruct, educate, and assist Marines in the proper form, fit, function, use, and care of infantry combat equipment being fielded by this office. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper use of the plate carrier, or PC. The PC has replaced the scalable plate carrier, or SPC. When first receiving the PC, it is important to inventory all components of the vest. The vest should have one front carrier, one back carrier, two cummerbund panels, one left and one right inner cummerbund, two side plate pockets, one quick release cable, one yib yab shoulder strap, and one waist belt assembly. In addition to your PC, you will be issued two enhanced small arms protective inserts or ESAPI and two side enhanced small arm protective inserts or side ESAPI. We will now demonstrate the proper procedure for inspecting your ESAPI plates utilizing the four corner check method. First, ensure the size of the plate corresponds with the size of the vest. Next, take one hand and place it at a top corner of the plate and place the other hand at the bottom complementary corner of the plate. Holding the plate next to your ear, firmly twist and torque the plate. Repeat on the other corners. You should be listening for any crackling in the plate. It will sound like this. If any noise is heard, the plate should be returned and replaced by the issue facility. Next, take your fingers and firmly press around the edges of the plate to feel if there is any crumbling of the plate. Repeat the same process for the other ESAPI plate and the two side ESAPI plates. As you handle each component, ensure to inspect for serviceability by checking for holes, rips, and tears. Additionally, verify functionality of all buckles, straps, ladder locks, channels, pull tabs, pouch attachment ladder system or PALS, commonly known as MOLLE, and hook and loop, commonly referred to as Velcro. If any component is determined to be unserviceable, return the entire vest to the issue facility. We are now ready to conduct the front carrier inspection and insert the ESAPI plate. There are two side release buckles at the top of the vest. There is a metal ring under each side release buckle for the use of the optional yib yab shoulder strap, which will be demonstrated later. Disengage the hook and loop and inspect the kangaroo pouch. Ensure the yib yab shoulder strap is inside. Disengage the front flap by pulling the tab. Inspect the hook and loop and then resecure. Inspect the female buckles on each side of the front carrier. Turn the front carrier over and inspect the hook and loop. Inspect the one set of ladder locks at the bottom. Disengage the hook and loop material at the bottom of the carrier. Ensure that the soft armor is present and laying flat. Locate the plate pocket holder. Insert the eSAPI plate into the plate pocket holder. Make sure the strike face is facing the enemy and hard armor always goes in front of soft armor as worn. Ensure the plate pocket is secured as tight as possible to limit movement of the plate. Once the plate is seated properly, re-engage the hook and loop. Upon completion, set the front carrier aside. We are now ready to conduct the back carrier inspection and insert the ESAPI plate. Place the back carrier down so the pouch attachment ladder system or PALS are facing up. Inspect for serviceability.
ensure the cummerbund adapter is properly installed in the cummerbund tray. Turn the back carrier over. Disengage the hook and loop material at the bottom of the carrier. Ensure that the soft armor is present and laying flat. Insert the eSAPI plate in the same manner as the front carrier. Make sure the strike face is facing the enemy and hard armor always goes in front of soft armor as worn. Ensure the plate pocket is secured as tight as possible to limit movement of the plate. Once the plate is seated, re-engage the hook and loop. We are now ready to connect the front and back carriers. Place the front and back carriers down so that the pals are facing up. Turn both carriers so that the shoulder straps face each other. Engage the buckles and then the hook and loop on one shoulder, ensuring that the hook and loop is flush on the shoulder area. Repeat the same process for the other shoulder strap. Before we assemble and attach the cummerbunds, we will first demonstrate how to remove the waist belt assembly. The waist belt assembly is only worn when the cummerbund is not attached to the vest. Since we are attaching the cummerbund to the vest, removal of the waist belt assembly is permitted. Start by removing the buckles located at the bottom of the front carrier. Open the vest. Then disengage the hook and loop on the waist belt assembly and remove it from the vest. Stow the waist belt assembly away. We will now assemble the cummerbund panels. The PC may be configured for a left or right quick release pull. For the purpose of this training video, a bottom right quick release configuration will be utilized. Lay one of the cummerbund panels down with the PAL side up. Insert the quick release cable through the routing channel on the cummerbund as shown. Once the cable is fully inserted, place the pull handle into the pocket. The use of an ID card will help in placing the pull handle into the pocket. Inspecting the side plate pocket for serviceability, notice that the ballistic panel insert or soft armor is sewn in. For comfort, there is a removable pad behind the soft armor. Insert the side eSAPI into the side plate pocket and secure by fastening the snaps. Insert the side plate pocket into the cummerbund panel. Further secure the side plate pocket by routing the retention straps through the ladder locks located inside the cummerbund panel. Be sure to reroute the pull tabs back into the ladder locks on the side plate pocket.
Finally, secure the side plate pocket with the panel retention straps, ensuring the hook and loop is engaged. Repeat the process with the other side plate pocket and the other cummerbund panel. We will now complete the assembly of the PC. Lay the vest face down with the cummerbund tray open. Keeping in mind that the inner cummerbunds are labeled left and right, place them on the appropriate sides of the vest as if being worn. The labels should be facing down. For initial assembly, the adjustment straps on both the cummerbund panels and the inner cummerbund should be fully extended. Taking notice that there are two separate channels, one for the elastic inner cummerbunds and one for the cummerbund panels, insert the inner cummerbunds through the smaller of the two channels and pull the center white Daycron loops through the grommets. Next, insert the cummerbund panel that does not have the quick release cable through the support channel first. Repeat this process with the cummerbund panel that has the quick release cable. Starting from the bottom, route the quick release cable through all three white Daycron loops. Secure the excess cable in the top channel of the cummerbund panel it is attached to. A properly installed cummerbund will have the adjustment buckle near flush with the inner edge of the cummerbund support channel. Close the cummerbund tray. The vest is now complete. Once the vest is completed, don the vest over your head. Using the buddy system, check the fit of the vest. Make sure the top of the front and back plates are parallel to one another. Hold the front carrier up while securing the inner cummerbund around your body. Once the inner cummerbund is secure, drop the front carrier. With the front carrier flap open, using the pull handles, pull one side of the cummerbund panel towards the front of the vest and engage the hook and loop and secure in place. Repeat for the other side of the cummerbund and then close the front flap. Check to make sure there are no gaps between the vest and the body. On the front of the cummerbund, no more than three quarters of one inch of hook and loop can be exposed, even when wearing warming layers. None of the PALS loops of the cummerbund can be under the front carrier's flap. If these requirements are not met, have your buddy open the rear cummerbund tray and make the necessary adjustments to both sides of the cummerbund by pulling on the pull tabs of the adjustment straps. If after these adjustments are made and the cummerbund requirements are still not met, exchange the cummerbund for a smaller or larger size. The side plate pocket should be as high in the armpit as possible while maintaining comfort. Using their thumb as a measuring tool, have your buddy make sure the front plate is within one inch of the super sternal notch. If the one inch requirement is not met, Take the vest off and adjust the shoulder straps accordingly. We will now demonstrate the three doffing techniques, overhead, shoulder brake, and emergency. Lift the front flap. Undo the cummerbund and inner cummerbund. Grab the vest by the shoulders and lift the vest up and over your head. Lift the front flap. Undo the cummerbund on one side of the vest. Undo the inner cummerbund completely. Undo the side release buckle on the corresponding side in which you opened the cummerbund. Push the front carrier away from your body to slide out from the side of the vest.
The quick release system should only be activated in the case of an emergency or for training purposes. We will show the steps twice, first in slow, distinct movements and second in real time. First, hook your thumb in the ring and pull the cable down and towards the center of your body, turning your hips slightly to aid in the vest coming off. Depending on the length of the cable, you may need to lift your arm to free the entire length of the cable. Next, undo a side release buckle and pull the vest away from your body. To obtain a better stock weld, the PC has an optional component called a yib-yab shoulder strap. It is optional to attach the yib-yab shoulder strap to the vest. Using more than one yib-yab shoulder strap prevents emergency doffing. When participating in overwater flight with a yib-yab installed, you must practice emergency doffing procedures with the flotation equipment worn to ensure there is no interference between the systems. To attach the yib-yab, remove the buckle on the shooting hand of the front carrier. Next, remove the corresponding shoulder strap on the back carrier. Stow these components away. Attach the yib-yab to the back carrier in the place of the just removed shoulder strap. Route the end of the yib-yab through the metal ring on the front carrier in order to marry the vest. Conduct a pull test to ensure the yib-yab is fully inserted. This video was brought to you by the Product Manager Infantry Combat Equipment, Marine Corps Systems Command. For more information or to schedule training, contact PDMICE via email at pdmice at usmc.mil.